Last repair for the day. I did not have a chance to record the video today. So I thought, let me pick something small to work on. Maybe a flash drive or we have a Benz key fob here. Let's work on this fob and see what's going on. That looks like the customer mailed over the fob in bits and pieces. What the... Okay, so we have the fob mailed over like this, the motherboard. We have another bag. And this looks like the infrared component right inside the bag. We have the plastic piece that holds the motherboard inside the shell. The battery holder and the shell itself. And we have a note. It looks like the customer did not fill out the ticket. Or he did. We do have a ticket number here. But it looks like he did not print out the ticket and include it inside the package. So he just handwritten a note. 2002 Mercedes-Benz key fob will not start car. Appears IR was, has fallen off motherboard. Included in a small bag. And this was sent over from Washington. John. So the fob will not start the vehicle because the IR component fell off the motherboard. And I do see the IR component inside this bag. But this component cannot be good because if it broke off, it means the component itself got damaged. It used to be that every time I try to solder that component on the motherboard, I end up burning that component. It's very fragile. The plastic on that component burns quick. I already removed the component from the bag and the component looks something like this. And the component for the most part looks good. Or maybe it doesn't. I mean, this may not affect the functionality. We may still be able to use this component, but since I have a lot of donor boards, why not get a good one, a clean one, and solder it for the customer? This component is made out of plastic. If we use hot air, we're going to end up damaging that component. If we use hot tweezers, we're going to end up damaging that component. Even if we use our soldering iron and we touched the tip of the soldering iron with the component here, we're going to end up melting the plastic. Let me show you what I mean. The plastic on this component is like butter. As soon as you apply heat to it, it melts. Let me grab my hot tweezers just so that I can show you how fragile this component is. If we try to solder the component from the side, the plastic, look at this, look at the plastic. It just melted inside. I just wanted to point out how soft this plastic is. So we're going to have to use our soldering iron, but we cannot touch the tip of the soldering iron with the component when we attempt to solder that component on the motherboard. We're going to have to use our NF.mini soldering iron, and we're going to use the tip, the very tip of the tip, to solder, to apply heat to the pads on the board, and that will liquefy solder, and solder will attach itself to the sides of the infrared component. But we're not going to touch the soldering tip with the component. Before we do anything, let's take a look at the motherboard, make sure everything is good. We may find a Hiroshima on that board, we do not know. Check the traces, the vias, test points. We're checking for corrosion or possibly a broken component or a discolored component or liquid damage and everything on this side of the board looks clean. Oh, the coil is not soldered from here, but this pad does not connect to anything. The important pads are the ones in the front here. Why don't we quickly test and make sure the coil is good before we do anything else? Measure as we go along, mutate in continuity mode, and uh, we're gonna measure from here to right here. And that coil is not good. Look at this. The coil is not good. The coil will connect from here to here. Wait a minute. I touched the probes together and they're not beeping. What's going on? 
Oh, one of the probes came off the multimeter. I thought that coil was not good. Let's try again. That coil is good, yes. Good. So we only need to solder, apply a little bit of heat right here so we can hold that coil. But this pad does not do anything and it does not connect to anything. It's there so it can hold the coil down here. We do not even have to touch this pad. The coil is already soldered from those two points. But why not be a good person and fix it for the customer? We're going to use our nf.mini pen. And just with the tip of the soldering iron, I mean, I went over this pen in the previous video and I mentioned how tiny and small the tip of this pen is, how portable the pen is, and how much heat it generates. It's amazing. I love it. Such a small pen, but very powerful. In case you have not seen the video, the pen looks something like this. And we sell it on our site. It's called nf.mini, Northridge Fix Mini Pen. It's a top seller in our shop. All right, and if we check. Great. And look at that nice swap. It looks like the government's broom, the one they clean streets with, the rough one. All right, so everything on this side of the board looks good. Let's flip the board and inspect the button area of the board. We have all the buttons on the front here. The traces, the lines, everything is good. We do not have a missing component here, that's factory. Factory, 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 factory. We have a button here, a button here, a button here, and we have one more, the panic, right over here. And the infrared is broken off right here. And I have a donor board right next to me, and we're going to extract that component from this donor board. And look at the component. It looks nice and clean. So we're going to extract the component from here and solder it on the customer's board. But the question is, how are we going to remove this component without damaging the metal or the plastic on that component? We cannot use hot air. We cannot use our soldering iron tip. And we cannot use hot tweezers. So how are we going to remove that component? With our teeth, we're going to apply hot air from the bottom and we're going to safely remove that component. Look at this. I already used this component from this board. So... It doesn't matter. We're going to apply hot air from here, and then we're going to safely extract that component from here, and then we're going to put that component on the customer's board, and we're going to use the tip of our NF.mini soldering pen to touch just the very tip of the pad, the very tip of the pad, and we should be able to solder that component nicely on the customer's board. We're going to apply hot air from bottom of the board. Great. The component is out. Right now, the first thing I want to do is clean the solder from the pads so that the component can fit flush on the board. And just like that. Now we're going to use our NF.mini pen the Northridge Fix Mini Pen, and we're going to apply just a tiny bit of solder on the tip. Just a tiny bit. All right, so 
let's go ahead and check and look at the soldering amazing and if we check the other side the soldering is amazing as well awesome so let's go ahead and put the motherboard inside the shell the battery and we're going to use our fob tester to test and see if the fob is outputting 314.9 frequency and if IR is working. Right now, when I press any one of the buttons, we should see a frequency reading of 314.9. Now we have some interference from the equipment here. That's why the numbers are fluctuating. But let's press on the button 314.8. Very nice. If we press on the trunk button, 314.9 if I press on the lock button 314.9 and if I press on the panic button 314.9 now we want to test IR if IR is working so we're gonna point the fob on the top and we should get a reading of IR to indicate that infrared is working so press very nice IR trunk IR lock very nice and finally panic IR. The fob is fixed. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.